G'day trendsetters, today I'm coming to you from Argonaut Cycles here in Bend, Oregon. I believe they're expecting me for a tour, so let's walk on inside and check it out. Here we are at Argonaut Cycles headquarters. Hi, I'm Alex Candelario, the COO of Argonaut Cycles, here to take you on a tour of our headquarters in Bend, Oregon. Um, so basically, this is our showroom. You can see here we actually have a Cycling Tips RM3 review bike ready to get broken down and shipped out. Um, you know, right now we're producing about four bikes a week and getting them out the door. Um, and uh, still just kind of making every build as custom as possible um, in regards to components, to the build specs, to the geometry, to the paint, to the layout patterns, um, you know, down to the little details that really matter. Um, you know, so here we have a red axis group built up with ceramic speed pulleys, the Princeton, wheel set with Schwalbe 1 Pro tires and a physique saddle, black ink seat post, our proprietary stem, and a black ink handlebar to complement that. Um, and obviously a custom paint job that makes it all very beautiful. All right, so yeah, follow us. Um, so basically all of our custom frames begin their journey as a big block of aluminum. And, um, you know, essentially we're able to fully customize the geo for our customers and um, we tool up a full suite of seat cluster, bottom bracket and head tube, uh, depending upon their geometry. And, um, and that begins right here at the CNC machine with our very own legendary Mike Olson. And, um, and then uh, once, once he's done with those, We'll head next door and show you kind of what happens with the rest of the process. Here we are in layup and um, as you can see this is kind of a finished CNC cluster. Um, looks like it's a head tube here and so you know those just came out of the CNC machine. These will get really polished up. Um, takes about a whole nother day of prep work to kind of get these into a uh, situation where we can actually begin to put in our HPSM technology and and that's how we actually form the part so I'll show you that in one second um, but yeah first you know just kind of give you guys a really good idea of just the amount of work that goes into each tool all the custom threading all the polishing all the mold upkeep um, you know because these tools it takes a long long time to produce them and um, so we're really uh, really careful with them and they have to kind of produce a lot of parts so um, they go through a lot of wear and tear. I don't know, I'm not sure how much your viewers know about the majority of the industry in terms of how bikes are produced, but um, most everyone produces things on a la latex splatter mold. And so uh, we do things a little differently. It's a shop dog. Um, so if you can see here, um, this, is, this is a hard mandrel that is, is made out of silicone. And this is what we lay up our, all of our carbon on. And there's a really big difference between us and the rest of the industry in terms of how they lay up their carbon. Um, when you're able to lay up your carbon on a hard surface like this, you can really make sure that every single piece is 100% consistent in terms of resin transfer, there's no voids, um, there's no fiber distortion, things are not moving around inside of there. Um, so you really get a super consistent part you get really lightweight parts and they're really, really strong. So, cause we're getting, the pressures that we're getting out of our silicone are 10X what you can do in a latex bladder system. So um, our, parts are, our parts are really beautiful and super strong. Um, so basically we'll have a 3D printed uh, mold, which is what's gonna produce this HPSM mold. And so we'll pour liquid silicone into this We'll let that sit for a day, it'll harden, and then we'll have this. And you can see we have these aluminum inserts here that are the skeleton that kind of help us align, make sure everything's exactly perfect. And it also allows us to help extract the uh, silicone at the end of the process. Um, and so once, uh, once these guys are all ready for layup, um, I'll show you where that happens over here. So right 
now you can see uh, we have a chain stay mold going in there, I think. Um, and, uh, you know, just obviously taking our time, really, every single piece is so crucial, and uh, every single layer. And, um, you know, once Brian's done laying this up on this hard mandrel, then that'll get enclosed into one of our aluminum molds that he saw over on the table. And, uh, and then it gets baked for about 90 minutes. And, uh, and I can show you that over here. So we got, um, you know, it gets baked for about 90 minutes and then cooling down. So right now we have a stem cooling down, um, another head tube that's kind of enclosed in there. And, um, you know, once those are finished, then they get extracted. And um, I'll show you kind of some parts that, what it looks like. As you can see, you know, these are, these are fresh out of a mold. Um, we haven't done anything to them. Um, you can see the insides of, of each of those parts, just beautiful. Um, and it's, you know, we like to say they're as beautiful on the outside as they're on the inside. Um, you know, no, no, any, you know, it's just perfect little part. There's no voids, um, you know, and this, this is, this is just a sample part, but, um, pretty much every part comes out like this and it's, you know, consistent in weight. Um, again, you don't have that fiber distortion in there. It's all super clean and perfect. And, um, and this, this is, uh, this will be ready to get taken down to frame fabrication. Um, and, and then once it's down there, you know, a little bit of this stuff will get deflashed um, and sanded down, and um, and then they'll get sandblasted, cleaned and prepped, and ready for uh, the final bonding procedure. Give you another idea of you know, like our, this is I think this is a down tube, and uh, yeah. So with using the HPSM technology for us, um, it really allows us to kind of create that ride characteristic that that we really want and. You know, Ben's worked uh, for the past 12 years, basically kind of dialing in the exact kind of ride quality that he likes. And, um, you know, I can say like the RM3, which is our, our current road bike, is just, it's amazing. And we're able to kind of transfer some of that DNA heritage and that ride feel into um, some of the gravel products that we're working on as well, so. Yeah, this is our testing lab. Um, obviously we don't have much going on today, but typically, uh, you know, we're just kind of randomly selecting uh, parts and frames just to kind of maintain our high quality standards. Um, and typically, you know, we'll look at an ISO standard and we'll go past that uh, a considerable amount. And uh, for instance, the bike that I'm riding has actually gone through all three ISO standard testing in terms of um, bottom bracket and fatigue testing. Um, and you know it's gone through almost 300,000 cycles, which is oh, well over 10 years of riding. And I ride that bike every day still, and um, and so I love it. And um, so we're really putting everything to the ultimate test. Um, you know, obviously the bike that uh, Ben rides, he's he's been riding that for two years as well, and just kind of we just try to try to do as much testing as we can before anything goes out the door. Well, welcome back. Uh, we're at our third location, essentially, uh, where the real love happens. Uh, the paint and frame fabrication. Um, so you can sell, see there's a bike getting buffed right there. Um, we have various forks and stems in different phases of buffing and finished work. Um, this is our sandblaster, which is what how we clean our parts before they get put together. Um, so we get make sure we have a really nice, perfect bond. Um, this is our trim shop. We got um, some sanding going, and we got looks like a sub assembly getting ready to uh, get get put together over there with some uh, what is that seat stay? Maybe a chain stay. Um, yeah, so this is kind of where that stuff happens. Um, as you can see, we have uh, a lot of frames kind of in various states of prep work. Um, you know, again, our parts come out really clean, but um, once everything kind of gets put together, it all gets kind of sanded back down and then ready for paint, um, which in itself is always a whole nother challenge. <laughs> 
So, and this is our actual frame fabrication zone uh, where we really kind of put all the pieces together and make it happen. Um, we have our big jigs, obviously uh, super critical, making sure everything's perfect and spot on. And then uh, they get baked in this oven and uh, they come out and go back in the trim shop for some prep work and then ready for paint. Paint booth in here, um, obviously there's nothing going on, but gives us the capability to customize your frame. Uh, folks, it really doesn't do justice, this frame on camera. You need to see this in person. Or, you better yet, buy one for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> So I think, you know, one of the one of the key things too is like, so this is a raw carbon in there. And, you know, a lot of companies won't show their raw carbon, you know, because they're using filler and all kinds of stuff. Um, but, you know, obviously we like to really show off all of our raw carbon. And so we do that whenever we can. And uh, Matt has done an awesome job with this paint job. You know, with all of our bikes, you know, we're always obsessed about the weight. Every frame gets weighed before and after paint. Um, you know, before paint, we're around 790, 800 grams. And depending upon how many colors and what kind of finish you go with, uh, you know, we can get a Cerakote paint job down to um, under 30 grams and a multi-colored paint scheme, uh, you know, usually comes in around another 70 to 90 grams, which is still uh, still pretty good for industry standards. As you can tell, you know, we really pay attention to detail and um, high quality within that. So, yeah, super nice light frame there, ready to go out. So there you have it, folks, a tour of Argonaut Cycles here in Bend, Oregon. Don't forget to check out the website, which is ArgonautCycles.com. Thank you, Alex. As always, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the Gravel Cycles YouTube channel for interesting content such as this. No bullshit gravel bike reviews, ride experience videos, and other madness. As all of it is released to the channel. I'll see you in the next video.